Hill here from the Axie Body Piercing Studio in Des Moines, Iowa. And coming up next, how to choose your piercer. Hey, this comes up from time to time. Um, you'll have somebody come in or talk to somebody online and maybe they move to a different area or their piercer that they normally go to is moved somewhere else. Or maybe it's their first or maybe second or third piercing. Uh, maybe they haven't been happy with the results they've had in the past and they're asking, you know, how, do I, how can I tell whether or not I should trust somebody to do a piercing on me? First and foremost, uh, one thing to always remember, uh, it doesn't really take a lot to put up a shingle and a sign and print up some business cards and say, yes, I'm professional. Uh, depending on the state, there's usually not any type of third party training. Um, usually it's just they have to fulfill a minimum requirements and pass an inspection. So first off, don't look at that so much. Of course, if you're in a state where it is regulated, then yeah, it's important that they do have that license to do it because otherwise they're doing something illegal. And that should be a big red flag right from the start, waving away there. The experience of the person. Someone who is experienced and has been doing this for a long period of time is not only gonna have the techniques and skills to do it that piercing proficiently and quickly, but they're also going to have the patience to work you through the piercing process if you're nervous. They're going to have the patience and the knowledge to educate you on how to properly take care of the piercing. They're going to be very upfront about things. They're going to have the answers to the questions that you may have. If an issue does come up during the piercing or afterwards, they're going to know how to handle it. It's not going to be a big dramatic situation. Um, and they tend to stick around longer. If somebody's been doing something for two months, Chances are they may not be there in six months by the time that nipple piercing heals. So they're there for that support. That's one of the reasons. So that comes back to the next one. Are they established? Have they been in the area for a long period of time? Have they done a lot of piercings in the area? Do you know people that have been pierced by them? Establish, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of commitment to continue to be part of the industry. Uh, a lot of people kind of think it's some kind of lax style kind of thing where we're hanging out backstage with big bottles of whiskey and beautiful women and men or whatever you're into. The reality of the situation is, is piercing can be one of those arts that you either love doing it and you want to live simply or you do something else. So if they've been established and done this for a long period of time, chances are is that they're in for the long haul and there's a reason why they are because they continue to get business they get continue to have returning clients research the person i don't know how many people i know i'll talk to and they're like uh yeah i went to so and so and i'm like well did you go online and look anything about them no i just uh, just picked them out at random because they were the closest or they were the cheapest any piercer worth anything is going to have a bio online that describes where they learned, who they apprenticed under, how long they've been piercing, and other information about where they've worked through the years and information about them. It's important to look at that. If it's somebody that says, yes, I pierced, at, I did my apprenticeship from November to January and then I moved halfway across the country and I worked in a big city for six months and then I moved and I worked at some place in some small town in the middle of nowhere for two months and then if they're constantly moving there's one of two things happening either they're trying to go out and get as much experience from very important people and if you look at it they're gonna say I went here for this or they just don't have it and they're just keep getting fired let go pushed out move on to the next town kind of like a carnival you know, you come in, you get the suckers to pay, and then you move on. Visit the studio. Just because you're coming into my studio doesn't mean that I'm going to require you to get a piercing. The reality of the situation is a lot of people come in and kind of window shop. And that's fine. Come in, stop by, ask the piercer if they have a few minutes to talk to you about the piercing, or just tell them that you're, I'm looking to get this done. I personally, and most piercers, are happy if they have the time, if they're not with a client, to stop in and spend a five or ten minutes talking to you about the piercing and give you the details that you're, that you're going to need. When they do that, the things that generally what I always start off the conversation with is, here's how it's going to take, this is what it's going to take to heal. And I'll go through that pre-piercing -con pre consultation that's going to cover 
what the regimen is as far as taking care of the piercing, um, cross-contamination prevention, um, concerns about uh, lifestyle changes, sleeping habits, etc. Um, anything that I think is something that might be a trigger for somebody to go, oh yeah, I'm going on vacation next month, I should wait until I get back, that kind of thing. Uh, also, ask to look around the studio. Here's where something comes in that I don't know how to stress enough. Pride of ownership. Now, even if the person is only renting the space, the reality of the situation, or just needs a hired help, right, re, right yeah, the reality of the situation is, is you should look for pride of ownership. Does things look clean? Do they look well organized? Is it not cluttered? Is there, uh, are light bulbs burnt out? Does it look like somebody cleaned the windows in the last 20 months? Um, does it look like a place that seems clean, sterile, and safe? It makes you feel comfortable. Also look around on the wall, because that's going to tell you a little bit about the personality of the person that's, uh, that's, getting, that's going to be doing your piercing. Like for me, I have pictures of my family, um, mostly me and my son. I also have photos of uh, our various things I've collected over the years because of my involvement in music. I did lose a lot in the fire, so that's going to slowly build back up again. Anyway, that's beside the point. If the person is impatient, if the person seems like they don't have the time for you, or if it seems like you're getting a bad vibe, leave. That's probably not the guy for you. Also keep in mind that, uh, it was like I had a friend of mine tell me a long time ago, we were talking about a particular artist, not in the area, but way out west or wherever. This was years ago. And uh, as she put it, when I said, you know, he's really great, I'd love to get something done by him. She put it, would you eat in his studio? So that's something to kind of think about. If you went into a restaurant, you saw cobwebs at the corners and nasty, uh, I don't know, anything, dust, debris, etc., you'd probably be less likely to eat there. Kind of look at it the same way. Kind of assess it the same way. Does that person give you aftercare instructions? This is a big one with me. Um, of course, you're going to get a pamphlet one way or another, but actually going through the aftercare instructions. And you should ask us during the piercing uh, consultation or whatever, do you give aftercare instructions? It really makes me uh, surprised when so many people are so shocked when I get done with the piercing and I go, hold on a second, let me wash my hands and clean up the space and everything and then we'll go through the aftercare. And they give me kind of a blank look and these are people that have had numerous piercings and they're like, oh, okay. And I'll sit down and I'll go through the process and everything else. And they're like, man, you're, I've been getting pierced for like 15 years and the first time anybody ever took the time to explain it to me. And I had a couple things wrong and I'm glad you did explain it to me. Do they take the time to do that? Um, during the visit, uh, also look at the portfolio, and it's very important when you're looking at piercing portfolios, unlike tattoos, where tattoos, if you take a picture right after it's done, it's generally going to look pretty much the same once it heals. With piercings, not the case, especially if anything that's experimental or is prone to rejection or migration. So, if you look at the photo and the area looks really red and there seems to be like kind of an orangish brown stuff kind of in the background, on the skin, what has happened is the person has took in the pierce, took in the done the piercing, and they took the photo almost immediately afterwards. Maybe cleaned it up a little bit to make it look good. It's also why I see a lot of piercings that I would consider dangerous or just simply a bad idea circulating throughout the internet, where it's the same photo over and over again, posted by multiple people, and it's of like let's say for example the ring piercing thing that's been going on I guess right now. It's like it looks great two minutes after it's pierced, it's not going to look that way in two or three months when the body starts to reject it or it becomes infected because you're constantly touching everything with your hands. So when you're looking at the piercings, look at them. If they're healed, areas should be pretty much a normal skin tone and there should be maybe a kind of a little bit of an indentation or that curvature that we get when a piercing heals when that connected tissue connects in the center. Next thing to talk about. Um, the APP, um, Association of Professional Piercers. Uh, first off, I want to say, uh, over the years, I have uh, enjoyed what they've done. Um, I believe in what they're trying to accomplish. However, I've never really seen the point of being a member. And when somebody comes in and says, well, are you a member of the APP? Usually kind of is a situation where I have to explain to them, to be a member of the APP, it is not a red stamp you know what you're doing. What it is, is that they have gone through some courses, 
met the minimum requirements to be a member, and in most cases it doesn't involve a member of the APP actually visiting the studio or talking to the person in, in person, it usually involves a lot of stuff over online. So it's kind of like an online course certification kind of thing, plus you pay a month, you pay a yearly dues, and you're a member. I love the idea that they're trying to change the laws on piercings. I love the idea that they are trying to educate people, as, including the general public and the actual professional people, and they offer some insurance things and some other stuff. I think it's great in that annual convention they do in Vegas. The reality of the situation is, though, it does not say a thing about the ability, experience, or expertise of the person that's actually a member. All it says is they have met those requirements. So that's not a just, hey, APP, well done, that's who you should pick. So, there's some things to look at when choosing your piercer. Um, of course, I don't know everything. Some days it may seem like it. If you have some other suggestions, please put it in the comments below. Um, and if you have any other suggestions or questions about some of the things that I've suggested, feel free to do so also, because we like it when you like it. Um, also, if you'd like to see further uh, videos on educating, uh, education for piercing, um, these piercing educational videos and my aftercare instructions and all that fun stuff that I do on here, hit the subscribe button. Um, also, another thing we do is the, tattoo, the weekly update with the tattoo of the week uh, from both Wesley and Jack, which is kind of cool. The artists sit there and talk about the tattoo that they really like, and then we show it to you. But hit the subscribe, otherwise you may not get the notifications unless you click the bell too. So that's two things, subscribe, click the bell. Other than that, you guys have a good day. Um, good luck with your piercings in the future. And uh, I hope if you're in the Des Moines area to see if your piercing needs in the future.